And hello, welcome back, uh, guys, to Tublens Modeling. Uh, we are okay. Yeah. So welcome back. Uh, so we were talking about Kolmogorov scales uh, in the last video, and why we want to study this is because uh, we want to get some you know background and foundation in how to size our mesh properly. And Kolmogorov scales are important because uh, these are the scales for which uh, DNS. A direct numerical simulation is usually uh, you know done so that that's uh, how we should this this should be like you know a baseline for a common kind of baseline for all of us to you know get to know so this is very, pretty important here so Kolmogorov length scale is the smallest again smallest uh, length scale for uh, you know your eddies length scale of the smallest eddies and this is very important because that will determine if you want to resolve every single eddy, you need to know roughly what your size of the smallest eddy is. And that's that's why we want to uh, get you know get working on this. So uh, last time we were talking about uh, you know, our dissipation rate in this smallest eddy region, and we use eta to denote the Kolmogorov length scale. So uh, again we, we have some kinetic energy that's being dissipated per unit time. And what is this? What what are the typical length scale and time scale of you know uh, this uh, energy dissipation? All right. So let's let's define for for uh, for now uh, a time scale first. Let's let's define a time scale. Okay. So what what is the rate rate of dissipation? Okay. So this is in seconds. What is the rate of dissipation dependent on? So the rate of dissipation is dependent actually on the uh, kinematic viscosity. And this has uh, units of meter square per second. Alright. That has a uh, unit of uh, viscosity, which is meter square per second. And it also has, let's say, I mean, if you want to convert this viscosity into some time scale, you need a length scale as well. So you need a length scale. What is the length scale? This is the yeah, this is the actually what's the length scale you, you can get? This length scale is the length scale of the smallest eddy, which we will use eta. So this is the characteristic length of your smallest eddy, and that I mean just from this simple dimensional analysis, uh alright, simple dimensional analysis, we can arrive at this conclusion. I mean, I didn't have a very robust dimensional analysis, but this is just, you know, rough estimate, right? So this actually, this time actually scales as a function of some velocity, uh, viscosity, and of course the Kolmogorov length scale. So if we were to write, we can actually say this time scale is actually some function, or it can be just equal to eta over or eta square over nu. Okay, this is some sort of Kolmogorov time scale. And what happens, you know, to the energy now, kinetic energy. Alright. So this this is the length scale of the Kolmogorov, uh, Kolmogorov length scale. This is the kin kinematic viscosity. So you you have you have some some kinetic energy here, right? Some kinetic energy here. Okay, eta. And what is that a scale of? What is the typical scale of this kinetic energy? You have half u eta squared. All right. So is you know a uh, half times the uh, characteristic uh, velocity at the Kolmogorov scale. Now what is this actually? What is this u eta? Okay, we need to define. Okay, u eta equals to L or eta over the characteristic time scale T eta T eta and then now uh, you want to have it together then you just have this it goes as half eta square or eta over T eta squared all right eta over T eta squared if you want to get rid of you know t eta and 
that will be equals to eta over what is t eta t eta is eta squared over nu so eta squared and you put nu on top and then you will just have half nu over eta squared so this will become the kinetic energy you know kinetic energy rough gauge you will have all right okay so i you know i i didn't actually uh prove how you can just substitute everything here like that there is a there is some kind of um relationship you should use so uh of course this this actually gives you the final answer pretty quickly right okay so if you actually substitute everything in okay new square okay new square over eta square over eta squared and then you divide by the time scale which is u squared over eta you will just quickly get eta uh, this cube and then you have new cube over eta over here okay so this is a very simplified analysis gives you a rough scale uh, scaling of this but of course this wasn't vigorous i actually kind of skipped a few steps okay uh specifically how did i just arbitrarily choose a length scale here and a time scale here to be uh how how did i choose this time scale here to be this all right uh, because this is actually uh, this is actually a viscous dissipation scale viscous dissipation This is a viscous dissipation time scale but this this over here this actually is not the viscous dissipation time scale this is actually a uh, you know a velocity scale all right it's it's the rate at which the fluid travels let's say if you have an eddy if you have an eddy it's the rate maybe at which the fluid travels around this eddy and this is given the uh, Kolmogorov length scale eta. Okay, so how fast does this uh, fluid you know take to like swirl one big or one small round this eddy? So that time scale, the time scale, uh, it has it will be some sort of different time scale here. So it'll be a t uh, velocity, for example. So actually, I skip the step. Uh, in this uh, situation, I sh I could have just left it here as some velocity scale, all right. So this this is uh, I made this assumption that this t velocity actually scales with here, uh, this t uh, of this dissipation. I mean they are on of the same scale. How do I know? Uh, how do you come to that conclusion? Well, uh, let's let's uh, break it down, okay. We, we still say that this uh, this uh, time scale here which is this uh, uh, what do you call that this this is actually you know dissipation time scale which is correct um, this one this kinetic energy scale let's let's just say it is okay you have your epsilon equals to u or it scales it scales as u uh, eta square over uh, eta square over nu right how okay so this this is where we kind of you know stuck you would, would get stuck if not for another assumption okay we would get stuck here if not for another assumption is that you you compare these two time scales they are the same how do we actually do that all right uh, well we can say that the Reynolds number at this Kolmogorov scale, okay, uh, we would say that this this is a very key assumption, uh, very very key assumption. Okay, the Reynolds number at the coronal Kolmogorov scale is about one. That means the inertial forces and the viscous forces, uh, they kind of balance each other out pretty nicely at the smallest, uh, any scale. If you know, uh. 
if the Reynolds uh, number was bigger, then you would say, okay, maybe the viscous forces aren't as powerful. But we say the viscous forces are dominating at these scales. That's why you must say, you, you say that the uh, Reynolds number is on the order of magnitude of one. Now, if the Reynolds number was smaller, I mean, the viscous forces will be so strong that you cannot sustain an eddy. That's the reasoning you kind of use. It cannot be bigger. If not, the eddy, I mean, you, you are saying at this Komogorov scale, the eddy, uh, eddies are dominated by viscous forces. But you cannot say um, the Reynolds number at this scale is so small that, you know, your viscous forces are so strong that it does not even allow the eddy to survive. So you need to have this kind of assumption and that's the re that's some of the reasoning you use to say that the Reynolds number at the Kolmogorov scale is about 1. Now what's the Reynolds number at the Kolmogorov scale? So Reynolds number at the Kolmogorov scale it's about uh, U which is a U Kolmogorov scale then you, you have some characteristic length scale which is the Kolmogorov length scale divided by U. So since we say the, the Reynolds number is on the order of magnitude of 1, okay, is on the order of magnitude of 1, we can say u eta actually is scales as, uh, okay, we just rearrange the equation uh, into this, uh, u eta equals the Reynolds number times nu over eta, and u eta, and that will scale as, uh, nu over eta. So this is important and once you make this assumption and you substitute in this in here you would then get the same equation here. Okay so this actually gives you something in the form of what you would know at the microscopic level because you can imagine if you want to think about the microscopic level it's very difficult to measure you know, a Kolmogorov length scale, for example, or Kolmogorov time scale or velocity scale. It's very, very difficult, uh, if not near impossible, to measure these uh, directly. I mean, you can, in theory, you know, measure these, but uh, it's very hard to measure. So what actually do we know based on our macro scales, our big length scales? Well, we know our velocities, uh, macro scale velocity, uh, characteristic velocity, you know, characteristic length scale of of the you know of the large scales, and of course we know the viscosity. So if we know these three, uh, we know this, we know this. Therefore, we should know this Kolmogorov length scale. So Kolmogorov uh, length scale, uh, yeah, this should be to the power four. Sorry, this should be the power four. So uh, epsilon should scale like this nu cube over eta to the fourth and if you just to swap eta equals to nu cube over epsilon and you go one to the fourth okay this is actually how we derive our Kolmogorov length scale These are the scales of the smallest eddies. Okay, so uh, let me uh, bring you here. So these are the scale of the smallest eddies, and this is these are some of the things I wrote. I mean, uh, okay, we we say the length scale is eta time scale is tau eta. The length scale, uh, velocity velocity scale is actually u eta. All right, so. Uh, this all these things here is pretty much what I've gone through just now uh, and we need to talk about time scale as well for the viscosity and we related all of this by you know the Reynolds number being one and of course the the rate of dissipation it should equal the rate of energy input into this whole energy cascade so we made the assumption that Reynolds equals one and uh, we just rearrange the equation and we get this uh, formula here where the Kolmogorov length scale okay, is actually scales as nu cube over epsilon. All right, that's what the scale is at the, for the smallest eddy. So these are Kolmogorov length scales. So we can define 
Okay, yeah, maybe we don't need to define. Okay, but yeah, this this is what the Kolmogorov length scale is about. And of course, we can do the same for velocity. If we were to have this velocity being nu over eta from our Reynolds number e uh, equation, then we we substitute the Kolmogorov uh, length scale here. We will get a Kolmogorov velocity scale. Then we can substitute to get a time scale as well. Okay, so all this is great. All this is great. We should know this in theory, and we we should we should know this dissipation rate. We should also know this, and that should actually you know solve for our Kolmogorov length scale quite well. But of course, as with all things, we want to make it convenient for ourselves, and you know, uh, scale it in a very make this formula in a very uh, put this formula in a very useful way. So we want to write this in terms of Reynolds number. Okay, we want to get it in terms of the macroscopic Reynolds number. Maybe call it REL or RE mean or whatever. Okay, so how do we do that? So let's let's uh, go for our length scale. We can say that the Reynolds number in the large scales it's the mean velocity times the the characteristic length scale at the the uh what the big scales for example the length of the pipe now of course we have viscosity again all right we have viscosity again and all right so uh and we also we substitute the following we say that the the dissipation rate is the energy input rate or uh, into the energy cascade so this is the times uh, dissipation rate given so we substitute this scale into this uh, Kolmogorov length scale here and we will get this equation all right of course uh this this is almost you know what the reynolds we, what we want for reynolds number but you see that the velocity the, the viscosity is in the power cube you mean is in the power cube this thing is to the power of one so we want to get uh we want to make it nice so that uh, you know we have a reynolds number that we can get out so we multiply l cube here and we multiply L cube to the bottom and by doing so we actually get this formula here so you can see that the all of this here and this this is the power of 3 this is the power of 3 this is the power of 3 the all run out is this power of 4 which we can just bring out here we take out of this 1 over 4 power then we get L outside and the inside we can just replace it with the Reynolds number or rather 1 over the Reynolds number and this is where we get our 1 over the Reynolds number over here and that's how we get the correlation that the Kolmogorov length scale over the over the total you know, length scale I mean total macroscopic length scale it scales as you know a Reynolds number to uh, the power of minus 0 0.75 or minus 3 quarters and then we, we do the same for the rest. That means we we convert these uh, velocity Kolmogorov scales over here to so we what we have here is nu over eta. Eta is actually this substitute. Then we get uh, the epsilon and the viscosity here. Likewise for time, you just substitute accordingly. Okay, so we get uh, the eta, which is this. This function here, and then we have the characteristic velocity, which is the Kolmogorov velocity scale. We substitute that into the denominator. After do all the the cancellation and everything, we should get this new over epsilon to the power of half. And now we want to substitute this epsilon out, very much like what we did with the length scale. And what we will get, what we will find out. I'm skipping the working here is that uh, u eta over u naught this is the macroscopic uh, you know the mean velocity for example it scales as reynolds to the minus one over four tau eta which is the kolmogorov time scale over tau naught it scales as the the uh, reynolds to the half so actually if based on this we can actually estimate the total number of cells we need right so the total number of cells we need is this much. Um, we have V total, okay, it's the total volume of the whole domain over the total cell volume, okay, or per, per volume of the cells, or one the volume of one cell. What's the volume of one cell? 
we can say it scales as eta cube. The total volume scales as L cube. So the total number of cells you need scales as Reynolds to the 9 over 4. So if you've ever seen this expression before, this is where it comes from. Alright. Uh, so anyway, I'll stop for now. Uh, hopefully this gives you an idea into the Kolmogorov scales and why they are useful to give us a rough comparison of you know, why, why DNS, direct numerical simulation, is hard uh, because it scales exponentially with the Reynolds number and this is the derivation based on you know the scaling and everything. Um, hopefully this is helpful for you to see, uh, you know, understand Kolmogorov scale and how and in the next video, I want to talk about uh, how this actually relates to the mesh. Okay, so I mean, this this was already part one when we talk about volume, but I'll talk more about length so that you know gives you more concrete example. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys again. Bye bye.